Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Sign up forms, payment forms, feedback forms, login forms. There's so many different kinds of forms out there. But how do you perfect creating a great effective form design in any of your websites or applications. So I'm going to divide this video into different principles of form design. Now there are hundreds of principles, but I've shortlisted about seven to eight of the most important ones out there. By the end of this video, you'll be able to create some incredible forms which bring incredible leads and results. So without further ado, let's just get started with the video. All right, so the first principle is actually a question. Why are we creating this form? So you can always divide this into different aspects of the form. Who are we targeting? So for example, you want to target a returning paying customer. For, the, for him, form should be quick and easy because he's a returning customer. Now, if you're targeting the forms to a new sign up, so if you're targeting a form to a new user, maybe his experience will be slightly different because this is the first time he is giving you any information in the form of a form. Maybe you want to gather leads for the future, which means that tomorrow if there's a product that suits a particular customer, he can get back or you can notify him about that product. So it's great to always have that in mind as well. You can even be targeting someone who is leaving your platform. So for example, somebody is abandoning your platform or leaving your platform or application because of some reason, it could be anything. You might want to ask him, why are you leaving? Could we improve our service? Could you give us feedback? Is there any way we can help you stick back or stay with us as a customer? So there can be a lot of things around this as well. So these are just a few examples of who we are targeting. The next question will definitely be, why are we creating this form? Now, sometimes we create forms where it is not even necessary to create forms. So we must make sure that we are creating forms only if it is absolutely necessary for either the user or the business. So it could be things like gathering info for login. So that is the most basic reason to get information from the user. The second could be to notify the user, you know, asking him for email or phone information so that in the future, so in the future you can push new product or ask him for his feedback. A very important one under this is need assessment. Now for all those who don't know what need assessment is, so for example, you open an app like Spotify for the first time, it'll ask you what genre of music you like or what kind of artists are you interested in. That is need assessment analyzing or assessing what you like or what you require from that application so the service or that application can be targeted to you or it can show you content that suits you that is very important to make a user stay on your service or product for a long time last but not the le last last question that we must ask ourselves before creating a form is what is this form which means what is this doing? We've already answered two questions, who and why, but we also have to answer some a question called how. How do we create this or execute this form? Essentially, we answer this based on two factors. One is, one is the tech or the technicalities behind this form. So for example, your company allows users to sign up through Google or through Facebook or through Apple. And that way, rather than asking the user for information, you can just sync with something like Google or Facebook. And from there, you can gather information from. This will speed up the whole sign up or login process. And at the same time, will help you gather information just like you would do in a form. The second aspect is, of course, how is it beneficial for the business? If collecting somebody's phone number allows you to send an SMS on their number, that means you can in the future send them new products, send them notifications, or maybe ask them questions or feedback. That way it is good for the business in the long run. I'm sure you've seen a lot of forms where there are input fields which are not even required. You feel, why is this company taking this information? But in often cases, it's because they are using it for their business practices, to grow their business, uh, to be able to connect with you offline or on other platforms as well. Third aspect is of course, intent. What is the user's intent and if he has a mental model built around this system? So yes, intent and mental model. If a user, so if users are used to filling up forms in an application or a software already, they will expect a certain form appearing on sign up, on login, on payment, whatever it might be. But if a form pops up out of nowhere and the user has to fill it, he doesn't have any intention of filling up that form which means there is often times that he will abandon your service or just not go ahead with filling that form up. Now intent means 
how much does he really want to get to the next step if your intention if the intention of the user is to buy a product from amazon filling up a small login form might not be a big deal for the user because he's already added it to his cart he is looking forward to get that product soon he has his debit card or credit card lying around and he wants to quickly buy something in that area even if the sign up or login flow is slightly longer he will go through because he's already selected the product he already has his payment set up he already knows his credentials or his details and he can move forward with the purchase if if the user is high intent if the user is high motivation and has a solid intent there is a higher chance of him filling up a form. He can often give up on your product or a service if there is a slightly longer form. So these are three questions I feel you should be asking before creating a form. There are a lot of other questions psychologically from a user research point of view, but these are the ones that you should take care when you're just designing a interface for a form. Now comes the fun part, the actual sketching out part and seeing how things go. So the first principle is to make it super simple and straightforward. If something can be fulfilled by just creating an input field go ahead do it if an input field is not enough maybe you need a drop down then go ahead create a drop down but start from the very basics if an input field works and there's no need for say a drop down a number value or anything then an input field is good enough don't overthink your input fields for sure also the messaging or the labels or the placeholders must also be super sharp super simple and super straightforward if you're allowing if you're allowing the user to add an email in an input field just say uh, enter email sometimes adding a fake email or adding something like john doe at email.com might not be the best placeholder especially if you're just trying to be straightforward or your audience has no clue who john doe is the third principle of a great input field is to reduce cognitive load so for example we have five input fields where the user has to enter his information if we have to add say another input field or another field where the user has to add some information it can get heavy on the user's mind and he might not want to fill up such a long form so reducing cognitive load means reducing the number of input fields also reducing the amount of stress the user is taking just filling up this form if the information is basic like enter your email or full name or phone number that is fine but if you're asking him to add his postal address his permanent address or anything else you might want to divide this form into different steps so one form could just be the inputs for signing up or logging in another form can be asked after the login process is done and you can allot the second form which could be the detailed form at a certain step where his intention or his motivation is high and there is a higher chance for him to just easily add this information since it is absolutely necessary so again dividing forms up into either different steps or to allot them at different parts of the user flow can often be very helpful for the user and reduces cognitive load labels and and placeholders labels and placeholders are very important again so for example there is a small input field and there is a label on top and a placeholder inside this input field now what happens often is that there are some people who create an input box and inside that input box they add a placeholder text and that is it there is no label over it this means that the user has to remember what needs to be put inside this placeholder and work on the basis of that. So in case, in this case, a best solution, if you want to keep it super simple and clean, is a placeholder. Once you click on it, the placeholder arrives at the top. I'll show a little GIF or a little video on top of uh, this video where you can see how a simple material design input works where the placeholder text becomes your label text. I think that is a great solution uh, and it makes it a little more interactive and a little more delightful to use that. Another great principle is developer friendly. Now, oftentimes designers might create a, a form which works for the designer, works for the researchers, but doesn't work for the developer, which means that the developer might not like it and he might just give it a lot of sad faces. A great example of this is a calendar input. Yes, so oftentimes maybe booking a hotel or booking tickets for somewhere, you might have to set a calendar. 
Now, a calendar can come in various shapes and sizes. It could be in the form of little cubes or little uh, rectangles created, and you can select one of those dates. It could come in the form of an actual calendar, which kind of looks like a little table here. Pardon my drawing, by the way. And it can even come in the form of a drop down. So there are so many different methods of creating a good calendar and all of them work well, to be honest. But on different devices, on different platforms, and even on different kinds of frameworks, it might be different. So for example, on mobile, on iOS, there is this kind of uh, scroll through calendar. But on Android, there is this full fledged calendar, which you can select different elements on. So as a designer, we must design for all these needs and we must make sure that the inputs are based on what the developer has in mind already. So talking to the developer, understanding how inputs can work and what is the best efficient way for inputs to work is often necessary. Proper feedback and response. Now you've often seen error states for input fields. They often turn red or there is some message saying there was an error or you made a mistake somewhere. At the same time, when you have submitted a form, it is always great to get some sort of check mark, some sort of message saying, hey, Hey, you have submitted the form successfully, we will get back to you shortly or you can continue from here. That good feedback or messaging allows the user to be a little more sure of what he is doing, why he is doing that and if there's something wrong, that there's a there's a clear direct message for it. Now this not only depends on the designer but also the content team. How do they get the message across? How do they allow the user to know if the form has been submitted successfully? What what are the next steps after filling that form, etc. etc. Also, a good user flow is also important. If the form takes you to a success screen and then you have to click something to go somewhere else that gets a little tedious for the user. It's always best to allow the form to have feedback, but also to take you to your destination where you're expected to be taken to. Another very important aspect in today's time is security and privacy of information. So if you're taking a form where there are different, uh, you know, payment methods you have to choose from, you have to ch choose a payment method, add your uh, card information, etc. It is always good to have some form of messaging saying that, hey, this is uh, this is completely safe and this information will not be shared with anyone else. Oftentimes giving a little privacy policy button or oftentimes adding a sticker which says, hey, your payment is secure and there will be no issue with your payment is very important. For example, there are payment gateways like Razorpay in India or PayPal abroad or anything which have this little tag at the bottom saying this is secured by Norton. This is secured payment through PayPal, things like that. So the user gets some assurance of saying, okay, my information is private and secure with these people right here. Content and motivation. A very important part of forms is to motivate the user to fill out those forms in the first place. So if the user is signing up or logging in, your overall website's experience, your service and your product matters. A good form will allow you to buy the product faster, more efficiently and motivates you to buy that product. So for example, you have a form which allows you to check out, a checkout form essentially. And at the top of the form, you have a little bubble or a message saying, uh, hey, quick, the sale ends in, 10 minutes or this form is valid for five minutes. So in that case, you will ensure that you fill out that form quickly and you don't take any pauses or breaks. That allows the user to say, okay, I want to, I am motivated and I'm also have a time constraint. There's fear of missing out, etc., etc. being used here, which allows the user, which allows the company or the business to say, Hey, come on. Quick. Now, a great example of this is movie ticket booking apps. If you go to a movie ticket booking app or a website, they'll say, hey, book your ticket in the next five minutes. Or maybe if there's a sale or an offer, they might say, book your tickets in the next five minutes and get 10% off. Autofill and assistive content. So for example, you have a location input field. You want to add a location or your permanent address, etc. Rather than having you fill out a permanent address, full address, there can be a little drop down which appears or a model which appears which shows you, recommends you locations, addresses while you are typing in that input field. Often having this assistance given to the user will reduce the amount of time he's taking to type and gives you an autofill option as well. Again, reducing the time that takes to fill up a form is very important 
informed design. Now, the, now, last but not the least, this is one of the most basic ones, which we were taught in school. In, if you ever took information technology or computer science in school, this is what you were taught. If there are more than four or five options, you might want to go with a drop down. But if there are two or three options and you have to select only one, you might want to go with circular or rounded input fields where you select only one. If you have multiple selections, then you have to go with a checkbox, which looks like a checkbox, not like rounded or anything. In case you have date, you might want to add a little date picker to your website, which pops up and you can easily select the date out of that. If you have seats that you have to book in a movie hall or on a plane, you might want to create a little cute model which has all the seats being drawn and you select one of those. Oftentimes, if you want to get feedback, you might want to paste things like a thumbs up or things like thumbs down in case you are asking the user for feedback. If you go shop at say a Shopstop, uh, JCPenney's or any one of those big giants, you will, you will be asked how your service was and you can say smile, sad face, etc. Now I hope you like this video. I used Fig Jam for this little video here. I hope you guys try it out too because I absolutely love using Fig Jam. I post such videos every Monday and Thursday same time, same place. So I'd appreciate a subscribe and hitting that bell icon will make sure that you don't miss out on any one of my content. I'll see you every week, same time, same place. Till next time, take care. God bless.